Hey, what is up guys, Poncho Cortez, and I'm gonna be doing part two of my vintage footwear series. And here we are, the casual shoe. Now this is gonna be broken up into two types of shoes, which are loafers, first and foremost, and then we're gonna be closing it off with sneakers. So the first shoe I'm gonna be discussing is the penny loafer. Now the penny loafer in its original conception was meant to be a casual slip-on shoe and wasn't created until 1936. An employee of GH Bass had brought back a moccasin style shoe that was used in Norway and they had based the design off of that. I didn't get the name penny loafer until after World War II when American college students would stick a penny inside hence calling it the Penny Loafer. Now the Penny Loafer comes in many varieties. Personally me, I wear a black leather GH Bass version. There are different other shoemakers and brands out there that make the shoe, but if you wanna go with the original one, definitely go with GH Bass. When I wear it, normally I can. it goes well with jeans or other fabrics um, when it comes to khakis or dress pants. It's been worn by many celebrities. Notable ones were John F. Kennedy, Clark Gable, and John Wayne. Even films such as Rebel Without a Cause, uh, James Dean's character wears them with his high-waisted pants in the beginning of the film. So they're very iconic and they're a staple of American culture. Personally me, I like wearing them with, with jeans. Usually I'll have them with a the white, the white sock to give it good contrast. When you do this, um, do a proportion to your build. If you're a bigger guy, go with the 559 Levi's. If you are smaller and a bit skinnier, then you can definitely pull off the 501 look. So it all depends there. Next shoe is the tassel loafer. Now tassel loafers have been around after World War II as well. Their base, their design was based off the penny loafer too, and gave it and were meant to give the shoe more flair. Now it was a shoe that really ca caught on with the more preppy, a sophisticated look. Uh, people usually used it for casual outings or just to add to your outfit if you were dressing up. It all depends, but in today's contemporary society, it's one that can be mixed around with both casual and a bit of formal outfit. Sometimes I'll sport it with suits, but most of the time I wear it more in a casual setting. I'll sport it with khakis and a leisure shirt, such as a bowling shirt or a guayabera in this case. When it comes to pants though, you can wear jeans or khakis with it, sometimes dress pants especially high-waisted, they go very well with the style. In pop culture, uh, tassel loafers have been really worn. A lot in gangster films, if you watch Goodfellas, Henry Hill's uh, wearing them in the Idlewild scene when he's in, when it's 1963. If you watch The Sopranos, Tony Soprano himself wears the shoe quite a bit. So it's meant more of a casual, sophisticated look as opposed to being something associated with greasers. Next shoe we're gonna get into is the PF Flyer. They were made since 1937 and originally went under the name PF Goodrich. The PF Flyer itself didn't come out until 1944 when it was originally meant for kids as the foot as the type of sneaker for them. Outside of kids though, their most famous spokesperson was Bob Cosby of the Boston Celtics who who sported them back in 1958. Now when it comes to most people my age, we mostly know PF Flyers from the movie The Sandlot, famously worn by Benny Rodriguez when he's trying to retrieve the Babe Ruth baseball. That is really how the shoe became iconic amongst millennials and millennial greasers that exist now is because of the movie The Sandlot, let's face it. Nonetheless, it's a good shoe and it's one that should really be paired up with jeans mostly just because it was the style of the time back in the 50s. Sometimes khakis, it could work too since it's they are just a regular pant. Personally me, I think the 501 or the 559 uh, Levi's works too. Finally, the last shoe I'm gonna be talking about, one of the most iconic American shoes you can ever own or wear is the Chuck Taylor Converse. Now these are ones that have been seen in almost every movie. Almost every person on earth has, or in the United States has had a pair of these. The com Converse are typically associated with greasers just because of our films that we've seen such as The Outsiders. The Wanderers and even Greece, where they sport them frequently. Charles Chuck Taylor worked for the Converse Company in 1923. He was an ambassador and a sales associate, quickly moved up the ranks and was able to get his signature on the patch logo itself. So if you look at the shoe, it's got his signature on the patch. Now the shoe goes across many subcultures. It doesn't just work with rockabillies and greasers. Everyone has, has had a pair. These were shoes that were actually originally used for athletics as well. Famous Laker, Wilt Chamberlain himself sported Converse. Now me, usually when I'm wearing Chuck Taylors, I like to wear them with just my jeans. 
the pairs I mentioned before, the 501s and the 559s, and sometimes even gray sweats. If you guys remember the movie Grease, uh, Danny Zuko had to wear a pair of Converse as well for gym, as well as a pair of gray sweats, and it works well with it, honestly. It gives you that vintage look if you're gonna go jogging, and they're just a comfortable shoe to wear if you're gonna work out. But definitely wear them with those pairs of pants. Sometimes people wear them with khakis as well. It works too. Personally, me, I'm more of a denim and sweats guy when it comes to my Converse. So those are the four shoes I'm gonna be discussing in part two of my men's vintage footwear. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, and subscribe for more.